Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some fussy eater meals that your kids will actually love. I myself have had a very fussy eater in the past and all of the recipes I'm gonna share with you today are tried and tested and they really work. They're also super healthy with lots of hidden veggies in them as well. So I'm gonna show you nine recipes in total, quite a few dinner ideas, but then also a lunch option and some breakfasts as well. So I hope you really enjoy this video. So many of you guys asked me to make this on Instagram so this is for you and if you like it give it a big like and if you aren't subscribed and you like my content please consider subscribing down below you just have to hit the little red button and without further ado let's get into my meals Okay, so the first recipe that I wanted to share with you is this cauliflower mac and cheese. And it was actually this dish that gave me the idea to make a fussy eater video. I shared this on my Instagram stories and people went out of their way to tell me how much their children loved it despite being fussy eaters. So it's a really good one, super simple to make as well. It's one of Jackson's absolute favorite. And pasta sauces and pasta bakes in general are a great way to hide veggies um, into your kids' meals so this one's full of cauliflower and I'll show you how I make it I'll also make sure to link all the recipes in the description so if you want to go ahead and follow them as well you can but first off you will want to make the macaroni pasta to what the instructions on the packaging say so for me I need to boil this for eight to ten minutes and while that is cooking I'm also going to steam a whole head of cauliflower um, my kids they don't notice the cauliflower they're quite used to having it in there um, but if you're worried or if your children have never had this you don't have to add an entire head of cauliflower that's what I do but you could start with like half a head or a smaller amount if you want to but I just whack the whole thing in because I'm making quite a big one as well and I always like to steam the veggies if I can just helps to hold in a bit more goodness so I got this little steamer from Joseph and Joseph you just stick it into a pan with a little bit of water put the lid on and then after about five to six minutes, I'll just check that it is soft and ready to be pureed. So I've had this little handheld brawn mixer forever. It's what I use to wean all of my boys, but whatever kind of blender or Nutribullet or whatever you have, or you could even just use a potato masher to be honest to um, break down the cauliflower. I like it to be quite smooth so that the kids don't really notice it. Once I've done that, I will get on and make the cheese sauce. It's just like any traditional cheese sauce you may have made before. So just a bit of butter. I do two tablespoons of flour, mix that together with a whisk, then add in a small amount of the milk, mix that together until the flour has broken down again. And then I add the rest of the milk and I constantly keep stirring until the milk is boiling and the sauce thickens. I never actually stop stirring milk because it just can burn so quickly and it really doesn't take long. Once it has got to boiling point and it's that bit thicker, I take it off the heat and then I add in my cheese. This is about 100 grams of cheddar cheese. I just mix that until it melts and then this is optional, but I like to add in a little bit of Coleman's mustard or you could add in Coleman's mustard powder as well. You could also use seasoning like salt and pepper. I just find it gives a really nice taste but we're talking about fussy eaters here and I know some kids get very offended by even just pepper. So if that's not what your kids would like then don't add it in but by making it like adding in the mustard I feel like even me and Matt quite like the taste of it as well. And then you may have seen that I just added in the cauliflower puree into the cheese sauce and really mixed that together then I add in the macaroni pasta which has been cooked and I stir that all together you could probably just throw this into the oven dish and put the sauce on top of it but I really like to mix it together um, so as I said I'm making quite a big pasta today but you could make small individual ones um, if it's just for your child you can freeze them really easy I used to love to save the um, goo dessert pots for little mac and cheeses like this then you probably saw I grated a bit more cheese on top and then I stick it under the grill until it's all like brown and melted and like bubbling away and this is just such a delicious meal I would like I feel like having this right now just looking at it and the kids love it 
And the next recipe that I wanted to share with you is these hidden veggie sausage rolls. These are a firm favorite in my house and they're so easy to make. All you're gonna need is some ready to roll puff pastry, a grated carrot, half a grated courgette and some sausage meat. This is about 350 grams of sausage meat. Then in a frying pan, you'll want to fry up your grated courgette and carrot with a little bit of garlic and oil. And you basically just wanna make it a little bit soft. This only takes about four minutes. And then once it is soft, you'll want to take it out and mix that with your sausage meat in in a bowl and this really does help to hide all the veggies in your sausage meat they don't find it offensive as well because it is in a pastry I discovered quite early on with my fussy eater that if something was packaged up in a nice beige piece of pastry he would eat it and he wouldn't moan so I also make little chicken pies in muffin cases and things um, because pastry just tends to hide the inside quite well and it's really yummy there's protein in this there is veggies as you can see and like the whole family loves it as I said so once you have mixed your sausage meat and veggies up then you'll just want to cut your puff pastry in half and then lay like a row of your sausage veggie mix down the middle of each of those halves and then you'll want to carefully fold one side over to the other of the pastry and then you can secure that just by using a little fork along the edges. This is so quick and easy to do and really simple. They also look great and I make a big long one like this that I then cut up and it's up to you how big you make your sausage rolls. You could make them really small for a party or you could make them bigger. I tend to make them somewhere in the middle um, and then Caleb or Fraser or whoever will have like two for lunch sometimes. Before I cook it as well, I just put a little bit of an egg wash on it which is literally just a beaten up egg this gives them a really nice glaze and makes them look like a really nice golden brown when you cook them and just makes them look that bit more appetizing but you don't have to do this if you don't have an egg or if you don't want to um, but yeah then as I said I'm just gonna cut them up and then put them onto my baking tray I always tend to put them onto baking paper so that they don't stick and then you can stick these into the oven for about 20 minutes or until they're nice and golden brown and the inside is all cooked and that's it then they come out looking like this these are so easy to make they're really delicious as well they don't last a minute in my house as soon as I've made them they've eaten them up again so it's definitely a great one to try Next up, I wanted to show you my kids' favorite smoothie. This is the Green Monster Smoothie, and it's such a good way to get some spinach into your children's diets. This has been Caleb's favorite for years, and it's so simple. All you have to do is add in a banana to your blender. This could be frozen or fresh. Then you wanna add in a giant handful of spinach. I love using spinach if you have a fussy eater because it blends down to nothing and it has a very inoffensive flavor, kind of tastes of nothing. Um, then I also like to add in a huge tablespoon of almond butter, but you could add peanut butter or whatever you have. And then I also like to add in a glug of honey to sweeten it up for the kids. Then I'm just gonna add in some milk. I'm using almond milk, but you could use whatever you have and I take Tend to eyeball it but I think it's about 250 mil that I put in then you just want to blend it up and the spinach gives it this really vibrant color hence why we call it the green monster smoothie and then I serve it with a straw and the kids just drink this down I'll often make this for them if they say they're hungry at night or it's also great at breakfast and I really love drinking this one as well Next up, I wanted to show you how I make homemade chicken nuggets. Now, chicken nuggets are fussy eaters' favorite food, but often store-bought chicken nuggets are made of God knows what processed chicken. So this is just a nice way to know exactly what your kids are eating. So I'm just gonna cut up two chicken breasts for my three children, and I'm cutting them up into strips, almost like goujons, but you could cut them into any shape that you want to. If you want them to be smaller nuggets, you 
you can do that. Then you'll need three bowls. In one, I'm gonna put just plain flour and a little bit of salt and pepper. But again, if you don't want pepper, don't put it in. Um, and then in the next bowl, you'll want to um, just beat up an egg or two. Um, I'm gonna do two because I think I'm gonna need that much. So I'm just gonna beat that together. And then in the third bowl, you'll want to have some breadcrumbs. Now I like to make my breadcrumbs come from scratch because they're just so easy to make, but you can buy breadcrumbs in the shops as well. Um, but I tend to save the crusts of our bread for breadcrumbs like this. So I'm just putting that into my Nutri-Ninja. God, I actually use this a lot. <laughs> um, and then it takes like two minutes just to blend it up. And then that is my breadcrumbs. So once you have your three bowls in front of you, you kind of want to make this little um, assembly line and you just dip the chicken first into the flour and then you'll want to dip it into the egg and then finally into the breadcrumbs and then I stick it straight onto my baking tray which is lined with baking paper so that it won't stick and I just carry on doing that to all of them it really doesn't take long um, it's a little bit messy you get like messy fingers and stuff um, but sometimes the kids actually like to help me with this and that's another great thing to do with fussy eaters to involve them so they feel like they've made it and therefore they should eat it um, but once you've got all of them there I just stick this into the oven on about 200 for 20 minutes um, and then once it's done I just take it out and what I like to do is get the like fattest biggest one and cut it in half and just check that the chicken is cooked all the way through these don't look that appetizing on the baking tray there but they're really delicious and I like to serve it with the kids favorites like maybe a potato waffle and then the veggies that they like to eat like corn on the cob um, and carrots as well and they also like a little bit of ketchup with this and I couldn't make a fussy eater video without including quesadillas I know I've shown this before on my channel but these are so good so quick to make and healthy too all you'll need is some wraps some refried beans which I just find in the Mexican section of our supermarket you'll also want some grated cheese I'm using cheddar but mozzarella works great as well and then any veggies or meat that your children will eat this is a great place to hide veggies again but if your child is very fussy you can just make it plain with the beans and the cheese so first off you'll want to spread a thin layer of the refried beans onto your wraps I do it on both sides of the wraps but if your child is not sure about beans you can just do it on one side and then you'll want to add in any veggies finely chopped that your children will eat sweet corn works great in this onions peppers finely chopped and a shredded chicken as well is really nice in these um, but I'm just going to show you how I make it plain um, so just then the beans add the cheese and then put the top of the wrap on it um, if your child as I said is very fussy you could start out by making it plain and then when they realize that they like them in the future you can add in some really finely chopped veggies and some shredded chicken as well then just fry it in the frying pan for four minutes on each side cut it up and serve this is great with salsa plain yogurt guacamole as well but if they're very fussy they may just want them plain but these are delicious and a whole protein next up i wanted to show you how to make delicious homemade fish cakes our children should eat fish once or twice a week and if they hate it this is a great way to hide it so first off cut up about four medium potatoes and boil them and mash them as you would normally make mash the way that I do it is just run it through a potato masher then add in a little bit of butter and some seasoning as well some salt and pepper and then mash that until it is really smooth then you'll just add in some tuna you can add in two to three cans of tuna and I'm just using tuna that is in spring water I'm going to use two cans for this um, and just chuck that in with an egg as well because that really helps to combine it I must say as well this is not my recipe this is my good friend Kerry Welpdell's recipe I'll link her channel down below she has some amazing ideas and we have been making this recipe every week since 
since I saw her make it. They're delicious and they freeze really well as well. Once you have your tuna potato mix, then it's back to this little assembly line of flour, beaten up egg and some homemade breadcrumbs as well. Um, so you'll just want to take about a large tablespoon of the mixture, dip it again into the flour, then into the egg, and then finally into the homemade breadcrumbs. And you can just kind of like mold it into a fish cake type shape and then put it into storage. Whenever I make these, I tend to not like give them to the kids on the same day. I like to store half in the fridge and then half in the freezer. And then that's two nights of meals. And they're so great. These would also be perfect for baby led weaning. You could make them any size that you want to, tiny ones for little babies, or these are equally as delicious, like me and Matt could have them with the boys as well. And once I've got through all the mixture, I tend to store them in glass containers like this, and I always put a layer of baking paper in between the fish cakes so that they don't stick together in the freezer. But that's it. As you can see, I've got eight fish cakes here. So we also have another night of meals. Next up, I wanted to show you how to make Popeye pasta sauce. Now this is an Annabelle Carmel recipe and my kids loved it. I know it's green and I know that might scare some kids, but it's a very smooth sauce. It's also very cheesy, so quick and easy to make and for some reason my kids just really liked it and would eat it all up so first off again just make some macaroni um, the way that it says on the packaging and then you'll want to wash your spinach and then put it into a pot to almost wilt it a little bit this doesn't take very long at all and once it has wilted down I then tend to strain it as well because it is quite liquidy and then once I've strained the spinach I'll put some butter into the pot then I'll add the spinach back in that has been drained then I'll add in two large tablespoons of Philadelphia cream cheese and this is what gives it this really creamy sauce texture then I'll give that a good mix add about two tablespoons of milk and then mix that up again and then you can add in four tablespoons of parmesan cheese and mix that again and then you can just stick it into your Nutribullet or any blender that you have the handheld blender would probably work as well and I just let that blend so that it's really really smooth again the spinach gives it this really vibrant color. It's called Popeye um, pasta, but I like to call it Hulk pasta because my kids know who Hulk is. Um, and yeah, it's a really yummy, creamy, cheesy sauce and my kids love it. I also wanted to show you this muffin recipe that my kids really like and also just give you the idea of making muffins for your fussy eaters because there are so many great recipes out there and so many of them hide like veggies in them and fruit as well. So first off in a bowl, I am mixing all my dry ingredients, which is a quarter cup of wholemeal flour, a quarter cup of plain flour, and then half a cup of rolled oats, a teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda and half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon as well. Then you'll also want to add in a grated carrot, either two small grated carrots um, or a large grated carrot and also a grated apple. I'm using a red apple and I didn't even peel it or anything. So I'm just gonna chuck that into the dry ingredients and then give it a little mix to combine it. The apple gives it a nice sweetness and the carrot really does like, you don't really notice it, it really does bake down. So I'm mixing all that together and then in another bowl, I'll just want to combine all the wet ingredients. So first off, I'm I'm adding in a large egg and I'm going to beat that up. And then you also want to add in a cup of Greek yogurt. This makes the muffins really moist and healthy as well. There's not really any fat in these muffins at all. And as you saw, I just also added in some milk and I'll link the entire recipe down below. I found it on a blog called My Fussy Eater. And it's a really good one that we've made quite a few times. Then I'm also adding in half a tablespoon of vanilla extract 
and either some maple syrup or some honey. I'm adding in maple syrup because I thought this would be a good option for viewers that have children under the age of one um, because obviously they can't have honey until they're over one. Then I'm just mixing up the wet ingredients and the dry ingredients just until it's combined and then I'm putting it into my muffin cases. Now because there's no fat in this recipe, these actually work best in silicone cases but I didn't have any so it's just going to be that bit harder to peel the paper cases off of this um, but if you have silicone cases that works that little bit better um, but yeah as I said this is like full of carrots but there's so many good recipes out there that have hidden courgette or zucchini in them as well and they're really really yummy so I'm just sticking this into the oven at 180 for about 20 minutes or until they're nice and golden brown and then that's it you can serve and they have no idea that they're eating up lots of carrots <laughs> And the last recipe that I wanted to share with you is a pancake recipe. I know I talk about pancakes so much on this channel and I've shared so many recipes in the past. So if your child likes pancakes and they want other ideas, protein pancakes and things, I'll link some down below. But first off, I'm just adding in half a cup of flour, half a cup of oatmeal, then an egg, a whole cup of milk, and I'm using almond milk, and then like some baking powder as well, about a teaspoon of baking powder. Then I'm just whisking all that up, and then in my frying pan, I like to spray some coconut oil in there. I know I need a new frying pan, it's really bad. Um, and then I'm just going to ladle the mixture in. I normally put three in the frying pan at a time, this mixture will make about six. So what I tend to do is make them all up at once, then keep any extras in the fridge and pop them into the toaster as and when we need them. I like to serve them with berries and maple syrup. And in my opinion, pancakes are good for breakfast, but they're also good for dinner or any time of the day. And all kids love pancakes. <laughs> Right, so that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed these recipes. Let me know if you try any of them out yourself and if you have any of your own recipes that work with your fussy eater, please put them in the comments down below because I'm sure everyone would love to read those. And before I go, I just wanted to say, if you do have a fussy eater, it's not your fault and it is just a phase. Well, as soon as they're like five or six, they get over it. You can reason with them. So there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.